Today, we're going, there's a clue, we will be actually doing my dry flanges. Ugh. Because if you look here, I don't know if I can hold it still, but on the, on the rocket, you'll see the dry flange and the shaft move very slightly different. I don't, might be able to just see that. So the flanges have worn, but I'll be replacing the front axle. Yes, replacing the front axle, obviously the rear, and if anyone ever is going to be doing this, I don't know what happened there, remember when you go to get these, what ones you're getting, because this is a 1989, and because of that, you need the thicker dry flanges, or the 300s are thinner. So, if you've got a vehicle and you're not sure what they actually are, try and identify what your axles are before you buy these, because I don't think they do a replace um, a refund. I'm not sure. I've heard the stories of certain companies doing it. These are terra firma. I know I'm not sponsored by them in any shape or form. I got them because I thought, well, they need to be done, and I thought, sorry, I'll get these. So what I've got is I've got the correct bolts in case they're actually. In case you need the numbers, if anyone else has the same thing. Got the quick bolts, because there's actually a, a snapped one in there. Right there, which I'm not looking forward to doing. And I didn't get gaskets with these, so I had to buy the gaskets separately. But what I will be doing, I was taught this by an old school mechanic, an, an old boy. But with paper gaskets, you know when you remove a gasket or uh, something, like a head or something, uh, not head. Like, take something away where there's a paper gasket to avoid it sticking bit of oil on your fingers clean obviously and just around the gasket and when you go to take it off I bet you the gasket don't get stuck and I tried it on my bike on my sportster and he's telling the truth I'm not saying I didn't believe him but it's little things like that that make life so much handy so much hand so much helpful I think that's what I'm trying to get so yeah, we're going we're cracking these bad boys off. Now, I have actually got some axle grease with me. Unfortunately, it's not here in the picture. So I'll start cracking them. Shouldn't really take long to actually do. I might just do one and yeah, that do. But here we go. With obviously any job like this, preparation is key. So, I do have loads of paper towels, so fear not. Just trying to clean this up, so all around the mating area will be clean. I do have got some skiddy blades, so if the, is, if the gasket is stuck to the hub, I can still remove it. Just be a little bit mindful of these nuts, because bolts, sorry, because they're obviously going to have a bit of Loctite on there, which I do have Loctite. Just obviously we don't want to be snapping any. Is it been ruining our day? As you can see, I've cracked two off. I wonder if I can mount this camera anywhere. I need someone to hold it. Actually, I've got an idea. I'm hoping the camera can pick this up because I'm using the camera that's the um, my waterproof one. I don't have a screen, so I'm hoping it can see all of this. I'm wearing a grotty shirt I found in the back of that, and it's yuck. Ooh. Oh, oh, that's oh, right. I sort of hate that one. When a nut or a pole does that, it does that. Um, uh, but it's a bit of resistance, and suddenly it goes like, oh! Then you realise, oh, so it's, it's broke free. I've got one left. Oh, that's all three of them. Now we'll be reusing these. So obviously, I've got to give them a little clean up. But well, that's the process of bolt removal. Wire brush is handy. 
And now for just broke something. Circlip pliers. Insert, insert like so, and break like so. Oh, you are joking. Oh. Oh, we are experiencing technical difficulties here. Oh. Well, it was going well. Right. Camera keeps starting to die. I've undone the nuts. Bolt, sorry. Gentle tap. I need a mallet. Ew, ew. Please, as these flanges are scrap anyway, it don't matter if I hurt them. Oh. Ooh. Stinks. But that is one old flange. I'll stick that up here actually. Do a little comparison. A nice new shiny one. Oh, don't worry, I will tide all that up, don't, so don't panic. So there we have the old one, that's the circle clip. I was using the wrong nozzle bits, so I put the correct ones on, and it worked. That's a nice new one going on. There is a rubber o-ring that goes in there, so crap don't get actually in there and prevent any cont uh, cross-contamination. So we'll be cleaning that up, and I'll be smothering that with nothing but CV grease. The tub's got split in it, hence the duct tape. But I'll be, I'll be more than generous with that. I'll just send it with the grease inside. So that is one removed. All I've got to do now is clean off the old gasket, which doesn't look like it'd be that much of a pig, actually. I've got the blades to do it. Give it a nice clean up, and then bolt the oven on. So let's get to it. What I'm currently doing is just giving the bolts a clean up. I would like to have used brand new bolts around, but unfortunately I haven't really got the funds to do that. So I'll use these at a later date, swap them for nice new ones. I did think about the um, the like the T ones where you have like the um, oh, a T45, I'd guess it is, that goes in. It looks quite nice and neat, but I'd be worried about they'd be easier to round. And with this, this is your traditional bolt. With one of those, I think they, they would come under a screw. I'm not too sure. But I'm sure someone in the comments would be able to um, explain what I'm trying to say in a bit better and more understandable. So yeah, just clean this up. And put a blob of Loctite on there. Not a huge amount, so I don't realistically need it. I'm not going to do these up stupidly tight, because I don't actually need to. I'll have to do it to the correct torque settings. And that is straight away looking better than that one. But also I haven't finished, I've got to wash, clean the wash up as well. <sighs> what a day. So when I was talking about the gaskets, it was for my uh, primary drive on my... Uh, yeah, on the holiday that was. Keep it in. Oil, paper gasket. And pretty much do that all round. Little old mechanics trick that I was taught. I'll tell you what, it's one of those things that you, know, you don't really sort of think of, but it's so handy. Because it'll put two to serve two purposes. One, so that it sticks, help what helps to stick rather than just fall on the floor and annoy you. And two, makes it easier for when you've got to do a um revisit it. So I've put my oily gasket on. Yes, it's not bang on perfect, but it's just for showing. But I've put it on like so. 
so it helps to stick it while you're trying to fiddle around. Hopefully that will help someone out in the future, but it's something that very, it helped me out a lot. As you can see, that's one on. I did smother the whole inside of that with grease, as you can see, it's squirted out there, which isn't a problem, because that can be recycled. But we're slowly getting there. A nice tight fit, I might add, actually. That was a very nice tight fit. Putting the bolts back in one by one, as you, well as you probably can't see, but small bit of thread lock as you can see on there. there on to the next one. I'm doing it like that, so it's all done by hand. Obviously, I've never done this before, so it's sort of a learning curve, but it's. Yeah, I'd rather it done properly, so I'm taking my time this one. Good thing I've only got three more to go. As you can see, that's my phone. As you can see, I've got the um, the rear Salisbury dry flange off. What I'll be doing is able to undo the split pin, get the flange off. If I can, because it's obviously very tight here, get the shaft out. And just have a little examination of the um, splines on the diff side. Give the whole area a nice clean up. New gasket, the flange, um, upright drain, flange kit. This side will be done. I ain't gonna bother filming the other side because it's all the same sort of process. And this job will be complete. So, the Salisbury one is on, the rear, rear axle's on. Uh, remember to do this gasket first, obviously same again, I've put some little bit of oil on there to help it stick and if I never, ever get this off, there's a good chance that that might be stuck to the hub. A little old, um, old school mechanic trick I've, <coughs> excuse me, was taught. I had trouble getting this on, and I did originally think that it was the wrong one because I could not get it on, but using rubber mallet, as you can see, it's now on. I don't have enough room to actually get it all the way out, unfortunately. But it's there, done. Put the uh, circle clip on. Lock tight on the bolts to put this in, and then this this corner will be done. What I've done is I've put the bolts through the gasket like so, all ready to be lined up. Now it's like this, I can put little blobs of lock tight on these without worrying about it getting on the flange or on the gasket or anywhere else. Nice and easy like this. So when they locked up, got locked tight on them, slide the whole thing forward, well, in, I should say. That's it, ready to go. Obviously, while it's out, I've had a little inspection of my um, shaft. Unfortunately, I can't get it all out because there's a building in the way. But there's no um, backlash or anything like that, so nothing to stress about. Yeah, I will be putting a O-ring, a circle clip on there. Then this side will be done. Right, that's on. Excuse the tyre, that's only just for testing purposes only. But this flange is now on. That's got a bit of Loctite on it. That's, well, tightened up quite tight so it won't fall off. But this corner is done, ready to go, excluding tyre. But that but one about the hub, the flange, sorry, the flange is now done this side. Um, I've got the rear left corners to do still. But I might have to get someone to help me out because the um, two bolts have snapped and it weren't my fault. I've done one. But hey ho. 